Well, the holidays were relatively easy for me because I just did what I did every other day. I pretended everything was okay and I was fine. After we started going to therapy, it was a little more difficult to live in denial. The staff at Affair Recovery had encouraged my husband and I to hold off on telling our families what was going on in our marriage, so we didn't until years down the road, really when we were on the other side of the struggle. But I remember that very first Christmas when we're, we're in therapy, we're starting to work on our marriage and, and things were so uncomfortable. We have this huge life altering thing happening in our world and neither family on either side knew about it. When we got together, it just was like, okay, you know, gut it out, suck it up, keep smiling, and make it through the day. That first Thanksgiving was at our house, and I remember being in the kitchen and got the turkey and the mashed potatoes and the green beans and the dressing and feeling overwhelmed, not just with the food, just overwhelmed and emotional and feeling this tension between my husband and I, and I'm thinking, okay, his family's gonna be here in a few minutes, and how, how are we gonna make it through this day? How, how am I gonna act normal? And what am I gonna say when we all go around the table and say what we're grateful for? Because I got nothing. While our two boys were playing football in the living room, and of course, neither one of them know how this happened, but somehow the football came in contact with the ceiling fan, and the whole fixture crashed to the floor. Glass flew everywhere. But amazingly, in spite of them running around barefoot in our tiny living room, and, and glass thrown across the entire space, our two boys were totally unscathed. Not a scratch, not a splinter of glass on either one of them. It, was a Thanksgiving miracle. And honestly, after that, nothing else mattered. That crazy broken glass broke the tension and it gave me something pretty amazing to be grateful for. I still am in awe of how our boys made it through that. My family lives out of state, so when we visit them, we basically, we all live together. And I remember getting ready to fly up there for Christmas and thinking, I don't know if I can do this. Uh, we're gonna be spending like 10 days with my parents, with my brother, my sister, and their families. None of them know the biggest deal in my life. I'm gonna be surrounded by family and yet totally alone. You may have the opposite situation. Maybe people you're spending the holidays with do know, and that can be even more scary to, have to be around them now for the first time with this knowledge they have of your life. Lucky for me, my mom loves Christmas. Every room in her house was decorated. The freezer was stocked with my favorite cookies. My brother had a, a little boy, and my sister had a beautiful newborn. There's nothing like children to lift your spirits at Christmas and to help you experience joy. I'm so grateful for those two little ones. In a way, that first Christmas was a welcome escape from the work of recovery. And I just chose to focus on what I could enjoy, on the, the food, on the games we would all play together in the evening, on our boys getting to play in the snow and having a brand new life to hold. But here's the deal. With 12 of us basically living together, there was still tension and there was still drama. But at least it wasn't my marriage causing the drama. That was a relief and that was nice for a change. It's hard to make it through the day 
when your world is spinning and when your heart is broken. And I think the holidays are harder because they are weightier. They carry this expectation. I think the best strategy for surviving the holidays is to let go of the supposed to be's. I'm supposed to be happy this time of year. Families are supposed to enjoy being together. It's supposed to feel magical. It's too much pressure. The supposed to be's will suck any little bit of life right out of you. We have faced some really sorrowful situations with our extended family just in, in the past few Christmases. And if I focus on the supposed to be's, I can sink into a really deep pit. The supposed to be's will always be just out of reach. I have to focus on the good that I can find in what is. I have to stay in the present and in the, in the moment. I have to be intentional and pause and feel the good in little things like my favorite Christmas ornaments or the nativity that my aunt made out of paper mache or the beautiful poinsettias at the grocery store. I know if I want to find joy at Christmas, I have to choose to do the things that bring me joy. I have to make those things a priority, like decorating the tree or making hot chocolate and just driving around the neighborhood to look at Christmas lights, or reading an Advent devotional, or putting a puzzle together. My advice for you this holiday season is to let go of the supposed to be's. Be on the lookout for good things, small, ordinary, everyday things that you can be grateful for. Stay in the present, stay in the moment, choose to do things that bring you joy, and then let that joy invade the sorrow. Mm -hmm.